Hello and welcome my fellow miner. We have previously looked at NP Miner version 39.7 in performance mode also known as mode 1. This time we'll have a look at it in mode 2 which is low power mode. If you missed the previous video, don't worry, I'll link to it uh, when we compare the results between the two modes and I will also link it in the description and in the comment section. We will be testing the RTX 3060, the RTX 3060 Ti with Hynix RAM, the RTX 3070, the DIY 3070 Ti and the RTX 3080 Ti. The reason why I call it the DIY edition is because you have to assemble parts of it yourself. like put thermal pads on and that falls out and figure out where the missing screw, the loose screw actually belongs. Anyway, I covered that in the RTX 3070 Ti video that you can find on my channel. Now let's start and have a look at the RTX 3060. I locked the core clock to 1552 and the memory to 1300. The hash rate is around 34 and a half and if we look at the average power consumption in hardware info uh, 64 you'll see that it's around 85 watts which is quite low however if you look at the current you'll see that it jumps a lot i am to be honest not entirely sure if it's safe uh, to use this mode long term but um, it is a possibility if you live in an area where it's quite warm and you usually have thermal problems, this could be a mode for you. Or if you just want more energy efficient mining. Now let's have a look at the average result. 34.7 MHz per second at 85 watts, which gives an efficiency rate of 0 0.408. And that is quite good. Not long ago this would be the best I could achieve throughout. Now I can achieve it in an energy efficient way. Now let's have a look at the RTX 3060 Ti with military graded Hynix rubber banana RAM. I locked the core clock to 1350 and set the memory to 1050. The average power consumption is around 102 watts uh, with the current jumping from 80 something to 130 something. The hash rate looks pretty good at around 41 mega hash. Again, we see the temperature fluctuate, uh, which I find a bit unsettling. But I guess that if CPUs can handle it, then maybe GPUs can handle it just as fine as well. The actual graphic card is from uh, Asus Tough series with military graded components, and then they put bad RAM in it. Anyway, let's have a look at the average result. 41.1 MHz per second at 102 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.403. For an RTX 3060 Ti, I would categorize this as crazy low power consumption, um, but it is also at a lower hash rate than uh, an unlocked um, RTX 3060 Ti from before LHR. For comparison, I'm getting 62.3 MHz per second for around 115 watts with my uh, non-LHR 3060 Ti. But those cards are like the dinosaurs, a thing of the past. Now let's move on and have a look at the RTX 3070. I locked the core clock to 1020 and set the memory to 1250. Looking at the average power consumption, it's at 86.6, which is a little bit higher than the RTX 3060 Ti. Um, we see the same in current where it jumps a lot. That is just how the mode is. The hash rate looks to be 0.5 higher than the RTX 3060 Ti, which is not a lot. And again, we see the fluctuation in core temperature. Personally, I think the RTX 3070 is a wildly underestimated card. It's actually quite good and uh, works very well with other cryptos as well. Anyway, let's have a look at the average result. 41.8 mega hash per second at 87 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.480. Wow, that is actually crazy efficient compared to the RTX 3060 Ti with military graded Hynix RAM. Next up is the Y favorite, the DIY 3070 Ti. You may wonder why I call it the DIY 3070 Ti. It's due to Soltech being so nice to ship me the DIY edition, 
where you have to figure out where the screw belongs to right after you open up the package and then 24 hour after running you also have to uh, repad some of the ramps because it drops thermal padding it's a very nice diy edition quality work from Zotac gaming now let's have a look how it does in mode 2 i locked the core clock to 930 set the memory clock to 1150 and set the core clock to plus 100 i do that to adjust the voltage if you wonder why I'm not using MSI Afterburner Curved uh, option to just adjust the voltage, then there's a little novel in the lower left corner that you can read. The average power consumption is around 152.5, while the current is jumping around like 50 watts, I guess, which is a crazy amount if you ask me. The hash rate looks pretty stable around 55 and a half to 56. Anyway, let's have a look at the average result. 55 megahertz per second at 153 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.365. I would say the hash rate is lower than I actually expected, uh, while the power consumption is on pair with what I expected. Let's have a look at the RTX 3080 Ti in mode 2 before we compare with mode 1. I locked the core clock to 1500, set the memory clock to 1300. As you can see in MSI Afterburner, the actual core clock is jumping a crazy amount. Uh, and I actually tried different ways, different techniques to see if I could stabilize it uh, a little bit, but nothing worked. If we look at the average power consumption, we'll see that it's around 221, while the current is jumping like 80 watts. Uh, again, I have to say it's a crazy amount. The hash rate looks pretty good though at 83. I really wish that I knew if this mode was safe or not, uh, as I would definitely run the RTX 3080 Ti in this mode. Now let's have a look at the average. 80 3.1 megahertz per second and we're at 220 watts which gives an efficiency of 0 0.378 comparing to the RTX 3070 Ti it's actually not bad a little bit better comparing to the RTX 3070 uh, it's way worse so the RTX 3070 is really the one that benefits the most from mode 2 let's compare against the mode 1 results the RTX 3060 stands to lose 1.6 MHz per second at 20 watts cheaper. The RTX 3060 Ti stands to lose 2.3 MHz per second at 24 watts less. The RTX 3070 stands to lose 3.8 MHz per second but it's also 24 watts cheaper to run. The RTX 3070 Ti stands to lose 2.3 MHz per second and is 28 watts cheaper to operate. The RTX 3080 Ti stands to lose 4.1 MHz per second and be 56 watts cheaper. Through all the cards we can see that they have all become more efficient running uh, mode 2, the low power mode. However, what caught my eye was the lower temperature throughout. That actually makes this mode a bit attractive to me during hot periods where I can just instead of Reclocking, etc. Switch to mode 2 instead of mode 1. Or maybe even run mode 1 during night and mode 2 during day. We have now reached the end of the video. I would like to thank you for suffering my voice for 8 minutes. Uh, I enjoy torturing you with my perfect British accent. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is a good time to do it. See you in the next one.